Today we're going to go over how to calibrate S-Log2 using CSD from cameras such as the Sony a7 III or the Sony a7C. Previously, we have showed how to calibrate S-Log2 without using a CSD because we believe it's important that you understand how to balance a clip manually. But today we'll be grading this clip using a color space transform, aka a CSD. We'll be creating a more high key commercial type of look and hopefully you'll be surprised that when you light 8-bit footage from cameras such as the Sony a7 III, well, you can get a really good commercial look. So let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and go over the clip. So we're in DaVinci Resolve and today we're editing this clip that was shot on the Sony a7 III on S-Log2 and ITU709 matrix. The very first thing I want to show you is our color management. And today we'll be working in our timeline color space. We're using DaVinci Wide Gamut and Rec 709 as our output color space. The reason we're using DaVinci Wide Gamut as our timeline color space is simply because this allows us to get as much dynamic range as possible and hence we have lots of information to play with while editing. For my output color space I'm using Rec 709A. This is simply because I'm using a Mac and this will allow my export to be the same as what I'm color grading. Most of the things I watch and output things to will be watched on probably some sort of an Apple device, hence why I just output to Rec 709A. What I can do now is start building out our node tree. So the first thing I'll do here is I'm going to create a couple of nodes. I'm going to create one, two, three, four nodes. I'm going to create one more node, a fifth node. This fourth and fifth node is what we'll start with. This fourth node will be our CST in fifth node Rec 709. We're going to have two CSDs. So I'm going to have a Rec 709 CSD here and a normal CSD right here. I'm going to go over to my effects. And if you don't know what a CST is, CST is simply color space transform. Since I shot this on the Sony a7 III, I'm going to drag this. So you can go over here and type in color space transform. Come over here, drag this over to your fourth node right here. And here you'll be able to see your input color space and your input gamma. So here I'm going to input what camera settings that I use on my camera. So for my input gamma, I use S-Log2. And for my input color space, I use ITU709 matrix, but that's not on this list. Hence, I'm just gonna use Rec709. For my output color space, I'm gonna use DaVinci Wide Gamut, and I'm gonna use DaVinci Intermediate for my output gamma. This will give us the biggest color range to work in. Since we have an output to Rec709, which is like the normal image that you see, I'm gonna to go to my effects, and on our fifth node, we're gonna add another color space transform. I'm going to go over to my input color space and this time because I'm now CST in I've outputted to DaVinci wide gamut I'm going to input to DaVinci wide gamut input my gamma into DaVinci intermediate go to my output color space and I'm this time I'm going to put Rec 709 as my output color space and for my output gamma I'm going to do Rec 709A and this will transform the image from a before to an after and already we have a really good clean start so with today's image we're going to try and get a very high key commercial type of look and this is an awesome example of one of the commercials that i shot in which if you do your lighting right if you do your set design right your editing can be so easy we simply had one big godox light one massive key light with the dome just shining upwards just above her like so and we had white walls right here, which all kind of helped to kind of add as a as a bounce. And we also had a white table, which also ended up adding as a bounce. So that's really going to help us create this high key look. So what I'm going to do now is make another serial node after my CST in. And here we'll do our color separation. Here I'm going to press Option or Alt S. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a layer mixer node. And we're going to press Alt or Option L. I'm going to do this two times. With this layer mixer node, it may look a little bit complicated, but it's actually very simple. Essentially, what this is going to allow us to do is actually, it's going to allow us to do some color separation. Essentially, the bottom layer is your top layer, and the top layer is your bottom layer. But this will all make sense when I go through it. I'll label these as my skin. Essentially, we could actually you only use, have to use two. This one can be our greens for the greens in the back, and then this final one can be just our background. From here, what I can do is make another serial node. Here, what I'm actually now going to do is create some parallel nodes. And here, I'm going to press Alt or Option P and Alt and Option P. And here, we can do any type of masking that we need to do. And we can do that 
right here. Essentially why we're using parallel masking right here is because these will all fall in from this node right here. They'll be all working from the same information. Rather, if I was to do them as a serial, information will kind of be deducted as we go along, if that makes sense. And then finally, we'll just add one more node where maybe we can add some sharpening or you know, we can add some film grain if you wanted to. Uh, we'll just leave that as that. So now we'll come back to these nodes right here at the beginning and I call this my balance, my contrast, my saturation. We've got our node tree sorted so we can finally begin to start grading. Because we've already done our conversion, we've already got a really nice before and an after. We're going to start balancing out the clip. Here you can see the whites are a little bit clipped and we can actually just stretch the shadows a little bit lower. So what I'm going to do is go over to my balance. The reason we're doing these balancing nodes is that we have so much information that it's really easy to start doing these color separations because the more information you have and the more separation you have, it's a lot easier to select particular colors and particular tones and just isolate them and then color them as we wish. So I'm going to go over to my balance and what I'll do is I'm just going to drop my offset just ever so slightly. I'm going to drop my gain. I'm simply just watching my parades over here. So I'm going to increase my gamma, sorry, and I'm just going to drop my left like this. And the whites are clipped here, but it doesn't matter too much. It'll simply be these areas right here. So with the balance, we already have a before and an after and the clips, you know, it's come into the ranges a little bit more. What I can do now is go to my contrast. If I wanted to add more contrast, I can add it here and here we want the skin to be separated in a much nicer way and if I'm adding contrast normally you can see the skin can get quite muddy here and the way to fix that with contrast is adjusting your contrast point and that's where your pivot comes in. So your pivot is essentially your point of contrast. So if I was to start increasing my contrast I can see some of the midtones get a little bit muddy and by pivoting downwards so backwards I can shift the contrast to a much darker area and not hitting those midtones. So therefore, if I now do a before and an after, you can see we get a much nicer contrast within her skin. And that's looking pretty good. And then for the saturation node, we're going to saturate our image. But the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to our HDR wheels over here, go over to our global, go over to our saturation of our global and simply start shifting this upwards. And as you can see, we have a great before and an after. And we're getting some really nice colors coming into the skin. And then we can start editing our skin, our colors and everything else. We can now go over to our skin, go over to our qualifier, select her skin, press shift H to see your selection. And I can further adjust this by closing up the hue, bringing up the saturation, bringing up the luminance like so. But since her top is very similar color to her skin, so there's not much separation we can do in terms of that. So what I'll do is go over to my primary wheels and I'm just going to reduce my saturation slightly. Uh, and you can see if your skin tones are falling into the right path by going over to your vector scope down here and you'll see this line. If that line is not there, you can go over here and press show skin indicator and this line will appear. And as you can see, our skin, if we move this, you can see the skin needs to just simply fall onto that line. If the skin falls onto that line, we know our skin's in good hands. So even if I'm not looking at the image, which is over there, I can simply push the color like so, and the skin should look pretty good. So yeah, that's good. And we're just gonna leave that as a base for now, and we can come back to it after we've done our global look. So here we have our greens, we do the same thing, go over to our qualifier, select these greens, press shift H, bring up this saturation just so we're really selecting the greens, go over to my denoise, go over to my blur radius, and that will just help soften and feather your selection. Press shift H, I can go over to my gamma maybe, and I can start shifting in greens. If we're selecting these walls, I can go over to my saturation again and just simply increase that. And now we have a before and an after, and you can see that green starting to pop out. If it's too much on the blue side, we can move it towards the yellows. So we have a before and an after. So as you can see, we're slowly beginning to add color into our frame. For the rest of the frame, however, what I'm wanting to do is actually remove color. I'm wanting to get a bit more of the white look and the white walls. So I'm actually just going to go over to my saturation. And I'm just going to reduce this. What you have to understand with layer mixer nodes is the bottom layer is a top layer, like I mentioned before. So whatever I've selected on this layer, 
Even if it was to be selected on this layer, it won't be affected on this layer, if that makes any sense whatsoever. So let's just take these two. So I've selected a skin here and I've selected the greens. In this background node, if I was to desaturate the whole image, you can see her skin doesn't change and the greens don't change. That's because I've already selected them in these two nodes here. And that works in the same case with these two. As you can see here, her skin has not been fully selected. So we can go back into her skin and press Shift H. And I can simply drag that down, use our denoise again, use our blur radius to really soften up that image. The soften up the selection and press Shift H. Here we get a much nicer selection. And that's looking pretty good. I can go back over to my background now. We're not going to shift it to zero. But I can shift it down. And if the walls are blue and I want a more neutral color, I can go over to my offset and shift oranges into that wall. And by shifting oranges into that wall, you'll be able to see here. So around here, we have before and an after. So we've gone to a bit more of a neutral color. So now we have a really nice base to kind of start getting our global look. So right here, we'll call it our global look. So here, this works in a very different way to our layer mixer nodes. So we have our parallel mixer nodes. These work, these work individual of one another, unlike these. However, they're all working from the previous node instead of working from one another, if that makes any sense. I hope that makes some sense. So I'm gonna go over to my global, I'm gonna go over to my curves, I'm gonna make three points. One, two, three. I always start with three points. And what I will do is I'm gonna just lift my shadows ever so slightly here. I'm gonna lift my midtones, and that's gonna really brighten up those midtones, I guess, to brighten up the skin in a nice way. And I'm gonna, if I move myself, go back to my parade, I can drop down the whites and drop the whites like so. Highlights here, midtones, and shadows. So midtones are a bit too hot there, so we're just gonna drop them ever so slightly. And I'm gonna make one more point down here to add a bit more contrast into our shadows and bring that ever so slightly down. And you can see in the shirt over here that we're just adding a little bit of contrast. So we have a before and an after. You can see the skin is looking a lot more clear. I think the selection of the skin still needs a little bit of help. So yeah, I'm gonna go back over here and I'm gonna simply qualify plus and select this part of the skin. Go back to my shift H and we should be good. I can then go over to my curves. I can go over to my skin. If I wanted the skin to be a bit more saturated, if we're using DaVinci Resolve 19, I can actually go over to my color slicing, go over to my skin and start increasing this. And you can see it'll start adding color in a very nice way. So I'm simply gonna increase this ever so slightly like this. And I'm gonna increase the density of the skin like this. Here we have a before and an after and we're adding color in a really nice way. For now I just want to simply showcase some ways that you can tackle to create this high key kind of look. So this is looking pretty nice. So you can go back over to your global and I can simply possibly increase the gain even more, the shadows, the midtones, and I can drop the lift and that'll actually just add a little bit more contrast. And now we have an even stronger high key kind of look, which is looking really nice. To emphasize this, we can go over to our next node and here we can do a simple vignette. And this time we're not gonna do a darkening vignette, we're actually gonna do like a brightening vignette. And I'm simply gonna use radial filters for this. I'm gonna drag this one this way and I'm gonna press another one right here. And I'm gonna drag it the other way. And here, what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna brighten these walls. So I'm gonna go over to my gain and simply brighten this up. And as you can see, this is where the true magic comes in with these right here. So you have a before and an after, and it just brightens up the image so much. And it looks absolutely awesome. You can keep going, you can keep brightening it up, lift the shadows more if you wanted to, or you can just keep it low and just keep it much more of a natural type of look. So already we have a before and we have an after. And this, I'll be honest, I'm happy with the look. Here's another note if you wanted to add you know, if you want to do something else, you can add extra things. In this final node, you can add this after the Rec 709 or before. I'm simply going to do some sharpening. So I'll go to sharpening, go over to my sharpening over here and go over to my radius and bring this down to 0.47. And that sharpens really nice. A lot of people don't know about scaling, but scaling basically hits the more you increase it, the scaling will hit more finer points 
of your image and if the more you decrease it it'll hit the larger points of your image so simply if i was to increase this you'll be able to see we get this super sharp and detailed look like this uh which can look pretty cool depending on what you do but that might be a little too much if you're having problems sharpening your image instead of increasing your radius go over to your scaling you can simply start increasing this ever so slightly and that's looking pretty good so this is a our final look right here and i think it's looking pretty nice so we have before and we have an after and this is just one way that you can grade s-log to in davinci resolve uh, there are so many different ways that you can grade and this way we're using davinci wide gamut and this has enabled us to not lose the information in the background and just keep our dynamic range as it is so i hope this tutorial was helpful and that you learned a few new tips and tricks so yeah thank you